Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I am here today at the Rock Island Auction Company, and I have gone back in time. So you are watching this uh, before in the lead up to the September of 2016 premiere auction. However, I am filming this back uh, in the lead up to the April 2016 auction. And the reason is, in April they have a GX rifle available, and in September they are selling a GY rifle. These are both, these are the two versions of John Pedersen's version of the Garand. So a uh, little bit of a quick backstory, John Pedersen was the arms designer who was really in direct competition with John Garand uh, and came very close to having his toggle-locked delayed blowback rifle adopted as the US standard military arm instead of the Garand. However, things didn't work, quite work out for him. He lost to Garand. Uh, Garand develops a 30-06 caliber gas-operated rotating bolt rifle. It's an excellent rifle. It's probably the right choice by the U.S. Ordnance Department. Patterson gets, he really, he wants one last shot at getting a rifle adopted or manufactured or purchased, probably is the most important part, by the U.S. military. So in 1939, which is three years after the M1 has been formally adopted, in 1939 he develops his own version of Garand's rifle. So this is, these are gas-operated, they're rotating bolt, mechanically or, or in, in terms of how they function, they're identical to the Garand with a few little tiny changes. But what's interesting is he made two different versions, a GX and a GY. And they appear to be identical, but there's got to be some difference. And I've been really curious since I found out about these, what is the difference between these two models? Uh, there were only 12 examples of each one made, maybe 10, uh, certainly not very many, only a handful of each one are known. And so when I realized I was going to have the opportunity to look at two of them side by side, I knew this would be the perfect opportunity to figure out once and for all what the difference is between these two things. And I have figured it out. There are two substantial differences. Let me go ahead and bring the camera up in close and I will show you what they both are. All right, so my first suspicion was that these two, the GX and the GY, probably used different types of end block clip. We know that Pedersen tinkered around with a couple different versions of clips in his toggle locked rifle, and that seemed like a reasonable assumption for these. So, let's lock this open. I have an M1 clip, and I have a dummy round of 30 out 6. So, we are going to go ahead and see if that fits. And lo and behold, in the GY rifle, the M1 clip fits in and functions just perfectly. Now, I will also point out, interestingly, one of the mechanical changes that Pedersen made on both of these guns, uh, in contrast to the M1, is that he actually replaced uh, on the M1, the operating rod spring also serves as the clip spring, the, the feed spring. Pedersen separated those jobs, and he has a separate spring for uh, the follower here. That also means that the op rod no longer uh, controls the clip release, which means I can put a clip in and click it in place and not have to worry about the op rod slamming forward. So while you might get Garand thumb, you probably won't get Pedersen thumb because you can push this all the way down. Now you can do that with an M1 as well, as long as the bolt's all the way locked back. However, even with a loaded clip, as you saw me snap in there, the bolt stays locked back until you either hit the clip release or pull the bolt handle back. Anyway, so we know that the M1 clip works in the GY. Now let's try the GX. All right, here's our GX, serial number one, of course. So let's lock this one open and take our clip. And our clip does not fit. The grooves in the receiver here simply don't line up for this clip to fit in. And that confirms, I'm happy to say, my initial suspicion that these two rifles use different clips. So the GX here, which would have been the first rifle, presumably before the GY, uses a clip of Pedersen's own design instead of the standard clip. Why exactly he would have done that, I'm not entirely sure. He was designing these rifles in like 1939. 
the M1 had been adopted, its clip had been adopted, you'd think it was fine. Uh, so presumably Pedersen thought that he had a clip design that would be easier to manufacture or that would be more reliable or would do something better. I've never seen an example of a clip for one of these rifles, although there are some blueprint drawings still existing, and if you look at the blueprints, you can see that the side of the clip doesn't look the same. It's got a, a window cut out in it. Um, and again, why exactly he did that, I don't know. I did compare the magazine depth and the follower travel, and it doesn't look like you could fit any more cartridges in this rifle than in the GY, so it's not like he came up with a 10-round clip. Um, hopefully, someone at some point will turn up a Pedersen GY clip and we'll be or a Pedersen GX clip and we'll be able to figure out what he thought was better about it. Now, before we uh, shut this video down, there is actually a second difference that I also discovered. So let's take a look at the muzzles of these rifles. All right, so I've got the GX on top and the GY on the bottom. And there are a few differences to the muzzle here that we can see, although nothing that would really suggest that they operate differently. For one thing, the bayonet lug is profiled slightly differently. Not sure what impact that might have. And the muzzles are a little bit different. The GX up here has a threaded section at the end. The GY does not. And you can see that this collar is just a little bit different. So I figured, let's take a look at the gas systems and see what's going on there. We will begin with the GY. So to take the gas plug out, I need to take this and snap it out using, of course, my universal gun disassembly tool. This rolls out like that, open it up all the way, and then we can pull out the gas plug, which is in gorgeous condition here. This just seals the very end of the gas system. Now, now looking in here, we see nothing particularly weird. We have a gas port in the barrel. And um, that's about it. Now it's kind of odd that we have this big hole drilled here, but I think we'll see why in just a moment. Let's take a look at the GX and see how it compares. We have the same sort of disassembly on the GX. Pop that up. And then pull out the gas plug. Also looks quite nice. And when we look in this guy, Wow, we have a really big hole in this one. In fact, if I take a pencil and stick it down the muzzle, you can see the full diameter of that thing. What we have here is actually a gas trap rifle. So when the M1 was adopted in 1936, it was a gas trap version of the M1 that was adopted. What this means is that the rifling on this gun, this barrel, actually ends right about here. You then have a really large, basically, uh, bore diameter hole, and then a, a, an unrifled smooth bore front section of the rifle, of the barrel. So what happens is the bullet passes the end of the rifling, and then gas is allowed to come down here and into the gas piston to operate the system. The advantage, it was thought, is that by not drilling a gas port in the actual barrel, you're not going to have an adverse impact on the rifling or the accuracy or things like that. This was a, a big deal to the Germans as well in particular. The downside was that these systems tended to foul up more quickly than a standard gas port rifle. And you'd have reliability and accuracy issues both. So after a couple years of, of experimentation, the US military actually ditched this system. And by mid to late 1940, the M1 Garands in production had been converted to a standard gas port system, which is what we see on the GY. So again, here you can see that on this top rifle, the GY, we have that little small diameter gas port. And throw the pencil down there as well. You can see that most of the barrel is still intact there. We just have that little hole as a gas port, whereas the GX is a gas trap rifle. So what we have here is the GX, clearly being the earlier rifle. It uses Pedersen's clip and it uses the original gas trap system. Neither of these are good ideas. Um, ultimately, there's no way the US military would consider a rifle with a non-standard clip. Pedersen's best hope was that his rifle might be considered a substitute 
equivalent to the M1 and put into side-by-side -side production. And if he's got a, a different clip, forget it. The Army is never going to go for that. In addition, the GX here also has the gas trap system, which may have seemed like the right thing to build in 1939 when the Army was still using that, but that pretty clearly was not the optimal system, uh, well, by just a year later in 1940 when the Army got rid of it. These rifles apparently were not tested by Springfield until 1943, so it seems to me most likely that the GX was the initial design, didn't actually go to military testing, and for whatever reason, whatever delayed the testing, by the time it, turned, it came around, Patterson had realized that he had these two problems with the GX. And so he went back and refined the rifle to accept the standard M1 clip and to use a gas port instead of a gas trap system. Because by 1943, that's what the military was using and, and that's the, the better system and the one that made sense. Okay, one last thing I want to point out about the GX here is while it was clearly made as a gas trap gun, it appears that at some point in its life it was modified into a gas port style. If we take a closer look at the gas plug here, you can see it's got an insert in it, and while it had this original large hole, that insert has a little small hole, and that's, that's indicative of a gas port design. So they didn't change the barrel. The barrel still has rifling that ends right about here, and a smooth bore section on the front, uh, that wasn't a simple thing you could easily change. However, adding this little uh, constricting plug to the, the gas plug is an easy thing to be done. By the way, this also explains why we have a very large hole drilled on both of these gas chambers, the gas cylinders. That was because they wanted to drill one hole from here through the other side and through the barrel. That's the simple way to manufacture these. And then uh, when they changed this to a gas port system, they already had the jigs for drilling this hole, so there's no reason not to leave it in place and then simply drill the gas port separately. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know this is a, a pretty eclectic niche thing that I'm all excited about figuring out, but I think it's pretty cool. Now, of course, the GX rifle has already sold back several months ago. However, the GY rifle is still coming up for sale here at Rock Island. So if you take a look in the description text below, you can uh, find a link to Rock Island's catalog page on the GY and look at their pictures and their description and all that cool stuff. And if you would like to own it yourself, perhaps you already have a GX. Well, you need the companion piece. Uh, and of course, if you would like to do actual shooting with these, the GY is the way to go because that's the one that uses the standard M1 clip, which is readily available. So if you'd like to own it, you can place a bid online or come up here to the auction house and participate live yourself. Thanks for watching.